to go do late sounds because I'm a delay guy myself. I have one setting. I turn it on and off. On and off. That's it. I, I used to program the delay times of the. Yeah, because you have a circular sound where you're in the eighties, where you had like four delays. Yeah, you can do that, but then you know, I have a couple of delay pedals. They're just a little. I'm using the hardware ones now because yeah. I'm designing. I'm working with T-Rex on something, and I'm gonna. You know, I'm always uh, waiting to find the ultimate delay. You know, but most of the time, you know, you accomplish it through the loop. You can get a nice sound. But it's about it's just a simple one. And then if I really want a little bit more, I have a long. They're set to one shorter with longer, so you can you can get the simulation of the yeah. four circular delays, like from the old. Lexicon uh, yeah. PCM seventies, yeah. which are, you know, got to be a little touchy on the road. Well, you know, funny enough, we did an interview with Dallas Shue, guitar mm -hmm. from the Edge. I love I love Dallas. Man, and we I went through it. his rig there, and you go like, fuck, man, it's such some boutique stuff is in there. I would shake my pants every night, you know. Right, and they they, they they give me shit about the size of my poor fucking Edge. It's like <laughs> he's got he's got he's in that refrigerator. He's got a fucking Dude, hotel. There's a hotel room full of gear, another fifty. And I'm a fan. Like, I'm a fan. Yeah. Well, so am I, and, 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 and it went through all the stuff, things, got these all delays, and you go like, Dallas, and it's like, man, yeah, that's what he wants. You know, if, if it was up to Dallas, there probably would be other gear in there, which is more reliable, but that's it. And for your uh, drum sounds and yeah, your um, uh, solo sounds, is that like you fill it up with your volume pedal, you work it down, and you crunch your rhythm sounds, and then... I, 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 so everything's have, pre. I don't do any. I mean, sometimes when I pull back the volume pedal, it's like it's like turning down the knob on your head. Yeah. yeah, I can do both ways. I mean, but I, I just I've always been a volume pedal guy. I would say. For some reason, it just made sense to me. Yeah, well, you got your hands um, So man, I manipulate all of my feet. Sorry, for burping. But uh, that's always been part of it. But it's 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 all pre. So it's like as I pursue, you get more gain. It's like, wow. So there's one setting on the amp. Yeah, we know number two. I use the number two channel mostly. But occasionally, I'll kick it into high gear, but so so I'm not really using a bunch of distortion units or anything. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a tube screamer, but I used to only use that on the, on the teeny little pedal board for the jam. <laughs> you know, because I don't use I don't know. I'm only use one like mono for the jam. That's the rule. Ah, can't go big. Yeah. Well, I, we're just playing a couple of the little tunes this time, but for my setting, I'm able to do the stereo on two bars. Yeah. But for the uh, jamming, it's only one bar. Wow. Well, it takes up too much space on stage, I guess, yeah. as well. Yeah. It, makes, it makes enough racket. Yeah, well, it makes enough sound, uh, sound I guess, you guys playing there. And you mentioned already your wild is a lead. You go for the lead. Oh, man. It, it just sounds better, man. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, it's like the same reason you don't do dive bombs anymore with the wing bar. It's like, you know, I don't run around the stage like I'm 15 years old. I mean, I would, I'd rather have it sound good. Yeah. It's all about the sound. It's like, I always come here to see what I'm wearing. Gotta be, I gotta bring this. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, um, now somebody told me that a mate of mine in Holland, um, are you using new plugs instead of new monitors? Yeah, it's, you know, I have tinnitus, man. Tinnitus, as you like to call tinnitus, it. Tinnitus, yeah, yeah. I have triple D above middle C, 24 7 since 1986. Rather than I, uh, I got it from headphones in the studios. Oh. More than playing live. Uh, yeah, no, I worked like 20 dB. Or 20 dB pads. Not that they got left at home, so I'm stuffing cotton in my ears from the, on this tour. But I got head protection. No, I, I would never wear ear ears. I would tell anybody to, to stop using them and to not use earbuds and be careful when you wear legitimate headphones, especially these Beats things with the. They try to crank 30 cycles, like the low end in yeah. your ears. Yeah, that stops it up. You just keep doing that for about a couple of years and you're going to start learning Braille. <laughs> because, you know. Or not Braille, you better get a hearing aid. Wrong, wrong sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's senior moment, I'm getting old. Uh, you catch my drift, it's like, you know, yeah, momentary pleasure, you know? Yeah, um, but like, be time. careful of the hearing, man. Yeah, well, it is. My, my parents are right with you. You know, you're, 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 you're going to go deaf, you keep that way. It's like my, my frequency response is really well. I mean, I can hear still, but 4K like that, you know? Which happens naturally as you get older, but take as much trauma. Yeah, but you do. I mean, you know, stick these things in your ear, they just keep turning up and turning up, and then the after, at the end of the gig, it's like <laughs> and you're, it's almost like you're, you, know, you feel like you have an audio hangover. Yeah. Your brain is fried because it's just taking all this Too information. Yeah. I don't think man was meant to have, like, you know, 120 dB shoved into its ears. You know, I mean, it, it, sound pressure level is a very dangerous thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to feel it. 
but directly into my ear can canal, I, that's a bit much. Yeah. I keep my hands over here. I like to hear the house, so you can hear that kind of natural ambience, and it feels good. It makes you feel confident. Yeah. It's the it's the equivalent of putting reverb on your guitar in the studio. It gives you the love. It gives you the you know, friendliness. Friendliness. You stand in front of a, like an old fifty you know, hundred watt Marshall with nothing plugged right into it. It's a pretty dense sound. It's like. Hello. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, and you just mentioned your solo album. New one, yeah. New one. When's it gonna be ready? Well, it's I gotta be finished by the <laughs> end of May, man, because I got a busy summer, and, and it's gonna be coming out at the beginning of uh, 13. Right. 2013. God, that sounds weird to say, doesn't it? Unless, of course, the end of the world happens on December 21st, 2012. Are we <laughs> you know, Jesus or the aliens are going to come. <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, you know the UFOlogy and Egypt stuff. I mean, I mean, I, I, it's a little. Well, being in the middle of shit, you know? there, nothing's going to happen. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't believe or disbelieve. I've seen some weird stuff in the sky, that, and with witnesses with me when I was not high. Um, <laughs> that was uh, nobody has answers for. Them. We know the answer, but um, I believe that we're not alone. But I mean, that's besides the point. I just, it's, it's fun to think about the other things besides the music once in a while. But if they're coming back and claim the world and go like, oh, you're going to die. Well, it's that if a meteor comes, I want to I try to catch it because I don't want to live through the radiation, the death, and the destruction. I want to, like, just take me out. I've had a great life. Take me out. Well, I feel bad for my kids. i got four kids, two adult ones and two babies, you know, yeah. relatively babies, four and a half and one and three quarter, one and, one and a third. They want to still pretty young. Yeah. yeah, and then I have my older kids, you know. I want them to have a life. Yeah. Yeah. So see, in the 80s, when I was still living in Holland, we still like the Cold War, you know, Russia and the Americans there, and um, I always said to my dad, you know, when the Russians press the red button, I'm going to go on the roof and paint the big bullseye on it. I want to drop it right here. So, yeah, you know, know, like, I don't know. I, you know, I think that's one of the great fears of mankind. I think the people, powers that be that would do that know better. <laughs> because the bounce back, it, it, it's, it's like going to punch yourself in the mirror. You know, it's, you're just punching yourself. You know, like, what's the point of that? You know? yes. what do you I mean, you destroy the world, and, and okay, so you blow this country up, and then the fallout from the radiation comes back. Comes to you. back to you. So yeah. I mean, nobody wins here. No. I mean, what idiot's going to press that button after seeing you know what happened in World War Two? And, sure. and then all the nuclear accidents. Look at Japan. Look at Japan. 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 Yeah. Next week, three days, I'm going to Japan. Yeah. And like you know, we it's still messed up. The radiation doesn't go away in a year. Uh, take going, anyway, how about the sports, right? You know what I mean? They forget about it. <laughs> the whole world is so radiated right now, anyway. I look at all the shit that we carry around, mobile phones, and look around, you know? But we don't even know what we're doing to ourselves. Uh, it's like in the 60s, we didn't know what, how bad cigarettes were. And now they tell you, don't smoke. Like, so like, probably another 20 years ago, you're going to go out. Like, all the toxic things in my life. I feel much better. Yeah, well, you look good. You're pretty good for an aging old guitar player. <laughs> Hey, total tour. Is that a tour coming to Oh, we're going to do a short thing in August and, and, and actually two weeks in the United States. Just got to put our feet in the water and then next year's the 35th anniversary of the band. And we'll be a little bit more extensive. And, and, and Australia? Yeah. Whole world. Because it will be awesome. You know, we'll probably, you know, May, June through September or something like that. You know how these, you know, world, uh, re, uh, 35th anniversary will go for three years or something. <laughs> You know, we helped our brother Mike Bacaro out. That was the whole point of putting the band back together again. Yeah. Because I was done with it. I was, the, it, you know, it, it had come to a point where there were some great musicians in it, and there were some people that I didn't want to work with. And then I, a few years later, Dave called me and said we should do something to help Mike out because you know, financially, the royalties start there. You know, yeah. The internet you know, took eighty percent of our royalties. Yeah, that sucks. And, uh, you know, so Mike in a position where the band wasn't working and he couldn't play to make a living working with other people. You know, he helped brother out. And so, so Dave called me and said, yeah, you want to do it? And I said, I'm in. But Steve Picaro's got to come. We have to have a Picaro in the band. Good. At least one. The only one we can. Yeah. And I said, I want Joseph to sing. Because Joseph can really sing and he was a part of the legacy. He was a high school friend. He was a real bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike and Nathan East filled in for for Mike. For the, so basically the whole gang and, 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 and the whole gang and then I got to know Nate for 30 years, so it, 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 it was so successful and it was, and it was fun. And we thought, well, you know, we can do this like maybe every summer because other people, 
Dave doesn't want to go on the road all, all the time. You know, he's kind of older, semi-retired, and Steve's got TV shows that he run from, you know, certain this time from that time, and, and so we can only work from like end, mid-May to beginning end of September. Because right. then the TV scene, I got my solo stuff. I do all these other wild projects. I'm going out with Ringo this summer, which is a great honor for yeah. me. So I'm really excited about doing that. You know, and the next year's the 35th, and that'll be a total year. And I got a record out. I'll be touring myself, and uh, God knows what else is going to happen. You know. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, yeah. see you back in again. Yeah, great. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your time, Steve. You're welcome. Really Thank appreciate you. it.